About a year and a half ago, jihadis opened fire and detonated explosive vests at an Eagles of Death Metal concert in Paris, killing 89 people and seriously injuring many more. Yesterday, on the four-year anniversary of the murder of British soldier Lee Rigby by two converts to Islam, a Muslim suicide bomber named Salman Abedi attacked a bunch of teenage girls at an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, killing 22 and injuring 59 others. Now, of all the different places to slaughter people, why are concerts becoming such an attractive target for jihadis? As usual, the answers to questions about jihad are found in the Muslim sources. In Surah 9, verse 73 of the Quran, Allah commands Muhammad to wage jihad, not only against unbelievers, non-Muslims, but also against hypocrites, Muslims who aren't really obeying Allah and Muhammad. Allah says, O Prophet, strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites, and be harsh against them. Their abode is hell, and worst indeed is that destination. The Arabic for strive hard here is a form of the word jihad. Muslims are commanded by Allah to wage jihad against unbelievers and hypocrites. And the Quran makes it very easy to accuse a Muslim of being a hypocrite. In Surah 4, verse 65, Allah declares, But know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. Notice Allah says, that you have no real faith unless you accept Muhammad's decisions with full submission and find in yourself no resistance against his decisions. So if you're a Muslim, but you're not obeying Muhammad's commands, you're a hypocrite. And Allah orders Muslims to wage jihad against hypocrites. Now, what does this have to do with jihadis attacking concerts? Well, Muslims aren't supposed to kill fellow Muslims unless the fellow Muslims have done something that carries a death penalty. For instance, under Sharia, a Muslim will be executed for committing adultery or for murder or for apostasy. Apart from something like that, Muslims aren't supposed to kill Muslims. So there are jihadis who want to kill unbelievers, but they want to avoid killing any sincere, devout Muslims during the attack. To be clear, there are plenty of terrorists who are willing to kill devout Muslims as collateral damage. They believe that if you blow up a building or bring down a plane and you accidentally kill some devout Muslims, you'll be forgiven because you weren't targeting them. But some jihadis don't want to kill their fellow Muslims even as collateral damage, so they avoid targets where devout Muslims may be present. Now, where do you find lots of people gathered but no Sharia-compliant Muslims. At some sort of event that's forbidden by Islam. This is why Omar Mateen opened fire at a gay nightclub in Orlando last year. He wanted to kill people without accidentally killing any devout Muslims. Concerts are perfect targets for jihadis who don't want to accidentally kill Muslims because music, at least anything we would consider music, is forbidden in Islam. In Sahih al-Bukhari 5590, Muhammad says, From among my followers, there will be some people who consider illegal sexual intercourse, the wearing of silk, the drinking of alcoholic drinks, and the use of musical instruments as lawful. Notice, playing a musical instrument is in the same category as illegal sexual intercourse and drinking alcohol. Muhammad said something similar in Sunan ibn Majah 4020. It was narrated from Abu Malik Ashari that the Messenger of Allah said, People among my nation will drink wine, calling it by another name, and musical instruments will be played for them, and singing girls will sing for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them up and will turn them into monkeys and pigs. Musical instruments and girls who sing sounds exactly like an Ariana Grande concert. So why did Salman Abedi target an Ariana Grande concert? Because the only Muslims who might be there would be the kind of Muslims that Allah was going to turn into monkeys and pigs anyway. They're hypocrites. So 
Allah commands Muslims to wage jihad against unbelievers and hypocrites. Since musical instruments and singing girls are forbidden in Islam, the only people who are going to be at a pop concert are unbelievers and hypocrites, making these concerts a perfect target for jihadis who want to be especially careful not to kill any devout Muslims. Will we be seeing more of these attacks? Absolutely. The suicide bomber Salman Abedi had memorized the entire Quran. He worked at the Didsbury Mosque in Manchester, which is a converted church, by the way. His years of studying Islam convinced him that terrorism is the path to victory. Where, oh where, could he have gotten that idea? Maybe from his prophet, who said, I have been made victorious with terror. So the ideology that drove Abadi to attack the concert is Islam, and it's still spreading in Great Britain. In fact, the ideology is being actively promoted by British politicians and reporters. Anyone who questions the ideology is labeled a racist and an Islamophobe. So the motive for the attacks remains. What about the means? Sad to say, but the jihadi who built the Ariana Grande concert bomb is probably already working on his next big project, assuming his next big project isn't already in motion. Muslim bomb builders usually aren't the ones who carry out the suicide attacks. They're too valuable. So there's a Muslim bomb maker walking the streets of Great Britain, and he's the sort of guy who will make bombs for jihadis who are on their way to blow up little girls. A few years ago, I made a video called Sacrificing Our Daughters on the Psychology of Islamic Rape Gangs. It was about the Muslim pedophile rings that prey on non-Muslim girls in cities across Great Britain. Police and social workers refused to help the girls because they didn't want to be called racists and Islamophobes. The people of Great Britain were sacrificing their daughters on the altar of tolerance, the way the pagans of the ancient world would sacrifice their daughters to their gods. The theology has changed over the past few thousand years, but people apparently haven't. People will still strap their daughters to an altar of sacrifice if they think it will make their lives easier. And now the girls aren't just being gang raped, they're being blown to pieces. And before their blood-soaked little bodies had even gone cold, British politicians and reporters were busy trying to figure out what to do about Islamophobia. Why am I still talking? When a nation has gone so utterly insane that its people care more about protecting an ideology from criticism and mockery than about protecting their own daughters from rape and death, what could I possibly say to restore their sanity? All I'm good for is stating facts. And facts are useless against British madness.